definitely recommend checking that out. This video is not sponsored by them, but definitely check out Utopia Newsletter. So the issue of your inner critical voice has come up in a comment before. Someone asked if I could speak about it. Unfortunately, I forgot to take note of who that was that asked that question, but just know this video is for you, it's for me, and it's for all of us. I touched on this issue very briefly when I was doing this massive, for me, commission, and I explained that I kept telling myself in my own head this was the best painting I'd ever done and how awesome everything was going, etc, etc. And I truly believe that A, this helped me get through it and B, it helped it turn out well. Now, I joke a lot in my videos about how rubbish I think my sketches are partway through, that I think a child could do better, how that's unfair to children, uh, stuff like that. And I certainly used to get disheartened, you know, and it's it's funny, but on the flip side, it was certainly true. And the negative self-talk is real. And whilst I'm just much more laid back about my sketches these days, because I've gone through a bit of a mindset shift, it really was an issue for me. It's still an issue I deal with somewhat. And it's probably something that a lot of you guys suffer with as well. I think one of the reasons that I wanted to be honest about my own thoughts, judgments and criticisms while talking in my YouTube videos is that aside from adding a tiny bit of humour to things, I think it's an issue that a lot of people do genuinely deal with when it comes to creating art or any other kind of creative practice. So hands up who thinks these kinds of thoughts while sketching. Why am I bothering? I can't do this, this looks rubbish, what's the point, why doesn't my sketch look like, insert artist name, why can't I get this right, I'll never get the hang of this, I'll never be as good as, insert artist name. So this was actually how I came up with my little tagline for my online course Sketch Your Adventures which is let go and sketch. As cliche as it sounds, letting go really has helped me move forward with my sketching and I'm just revisiting it at the moment actually, but I was listening to an audio book called The Surrender Experiment with Michael Singer and I think this is where a few years back it really kind of started to sow the seeds of this idea of just letting go. I am a bit of an addict to the consumption of personal development materials, so not 100% a positive or constructive habit all of the time, but just a disclaimer there. As a sketchbook artist, which when pushed is how I describe what I do, I don't need all of the pressure of producing a final finished piece. I'm free to start and not finish, to explore, make a mess, or to be precise and tight and controlled if I choose to be. The only person that is judging me is me and as irony has it, I am my meanest judge and my worst critic. So how do we deal with these head gremlins? Now, before I explain my strategies for dealing with my worst critic, whose primary mission seems to be to get me to quit art, I just want to say thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. It's a bit of a coincidence really as I've wanted to make this video about this topic for a long time now and it's been hovering on my to-do list and then I started speaking with BetterHelp and it just seemed natural that the two things have dovetailed. Is there something that's interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? For example, things like this continual negative self-talk, low self-esteem, imposter syndrome, etc. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist and you can start communicating with them within 48 hours. It's not a crisis line, it's not self-help, it is professional therapy done securely online. And there's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus network of professional therapists which may not actually be locally available to you. The service is available for clients um, completely worldwide and you can log into your account anytime and send your therapist a message. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. Although as urban sketchers we all know sitting in a waiting room is actually quite exciting for us but anyway. 
BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it really easy and free to change therapists if needed. It's more affordable than traditional therapy and financial aid is also available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit betterhelp.com slash Taria, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P slash Taria, my name and join over 2 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. There's a special offer for viewers of this YouTube channel, so you can get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Taria. So it's really easy to sign up to BetterHelp. First, you have to choose who the therapy is for and if you've ever had therapy before and the general reason why you're seeking therapy. And they'll ask you a bunch of different questions in order to get a basic background and to help match you to the best therapist for you. So before I started making this list, I thought I would ask at least one other person how they deal with their inner critic. I asked the person closest to hand, which actually was my husband, this was a mistake. He has annoyingly high self-esteem and doesn't seem to have to deal much with head gremlins. So he must be in the 0.0001% of the population that is like this. That's just my luck, hey? So ignoring my own head gremlin, who was hurling abuse like, who are you to talk about this? No one cares about your stupid list. No one's gonna watch this video anyway. It's all a waste of time. I forged onwards. So my first idea for battling the head gremlins is shifting your focus. So your sketch may not have come out as well as you wanted it to. Maybe you made some mistakes, but your head gremlin will tell you you're rubbish, you'll never draw or paint anything that's worthwhile, and basically you should give up and why are you wasting your time? The question is how do we flip this? How do we change this voice inside of our head. So my way of dealing with this is thinking about how far I've come, how much my sketching has improved, maybe looking back at old sketches and being like, wow, actually what I can do now is like way better than what I could do a year ago. And to think about how this is actually a journey, I know it's cliche, how this is a journey and this is just one step along the path and who knows what's around the next corner and what the next sketch may hold for you. My second idea or strategy about how to battle the head gremlins is labeling my sketches as experiments. This is one of my most successful strategies for just chilling out about the whole process. So this strategy has really helped me through the negative self-talk, feelings of not being good enough and imposter syndrome. If in my head I think, okay, well, let me just give this a try and like see what happens. It's the setting and managing of my own expectations. So if you go into your art making with an attitude of, I'm just experimenting, I'm just exploring, this is just an adventure, then no matter what happens, like how can you be disappointed with that? Because everything you do is useful. It can be evaluated and it can be learned from, which leads me to my next strategy, evaluate. Learn to step back from your art making and evaluate what you do like about what you've done. Note this down, whether it's physically or just mentally in your head and assess what doesn't work within your piece and ask yourself why, like what would you have actually done differently? I actually find this process extremely useful. So instead of throwing your hands up and saying this is rubbish, which doesn't help anyone, apart from perhaps your head gremlin, try to develop a skill of objectively looking and trying to understand what you would try to do different next time. This has been one of the best ways I've found to ignore the inner critic and actually improve my skills. Okay, strategy number four is to try and identify what your purpose is. This sounds deep, but stick with me. What is your sketching practice for? Why are you doing this? Is it to post to Instagram? Is it to try and impress other people? Really? Or are you doing this because you want to carve out a bit of time for yourself? You want to express yourself? You want to be creative? You want to have fun? You want to learn a new skill to actually shut your mind down for a while and get away from routine life and just a bit of an excuse to spend some time with yourself? All of these reasons and more probably why you're doing this and you're not doing this to show off to other people. 
So take that pressure off and then what does it matter if you screwed up this sketch this time? Just move on to the next one. You still got to fulfill all of the reasons why you actually sat down to do this. Okay, so tip number five or strategy, it's not really a strategy, it's perhaps just a way of looking at things. But finally and specifically relating to urban sketching, i.e. sketching on location from life, I find it a mindfulness practice. Sometimes I don't even think of it as art making, I just get lost in what I see, tracing my surroundings with a pen, exploring the details, and I'm not even thinking of anything other than putting down on paper what I'm seeing. I lose hours and then I wake up as though from a dream. Don't put pressure on these drawings. They're a record of space and time and they're actually just an opportunity to get lost in your surroundings, noticing all of those small magical details that no one else sees. This is you time and I personally find it's the one time that the head gremlin actually disappears. Until the spell is broken, I look down and I think this is sh